Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is how to enhance a waterfall using Aurora HDR and Luminar. So we're going to use Luminar as the host program, and we'll use Aurora as a plugin to, to um, from, from Luminar to go out to Aurora, grab all that incredible dynamic range that Aurora is going to pull out of the image, bring it back into Luminar, and then we'll complete the processing. All right? Now, before we begin, let's take a quick moment and thank our partner. Fujifilm. Make images, share stories, and experience moments at the speed of life with Fujifilm. Thank you for staying at home with us. And we're back, and welcome everyone. Remember, today is Wednesday, so after this show at 5.30, you'll see the Zoom meetup we're going to have after this. You're more than welcome to come to that. All right? So let's get started. So here we are, and I downloaded this beautiful waterfall image with a bridge um, off of Unsplash, and I'll, I'll give the photo credit to Christopher. So great shot here. Now, the, the image is missing a lot of the dynamic range that we can pull out of it. So when that happens, I like to use Aurora. So I'm going to fire up Aurora as a plugin inside Luminar. Now, if it doesn't show, then uh, shut down Luminar, pull it back up again. If it still doesn't show up for you, uninstall Aurora, then reinstall Aurora, and it'll appear. All right? So here we are, and I'm just going to click... Create HDR. Now, it's going to do its thing. And as soon as it grabs all that dynamic range for us, look at this. It's going to tone map it before and after. And I'm going to pull me out of the way so you can see it. So watch again. Before and after. What a huge change. So that's called tone mapping. Now that was just from one image. Imagine if you had a bracketed series where you had one normal, one underexposed, one overexposed, two underexposed, two overexposed. And these are stops we're talking about. Then you'll have five full stops that you could work with and it'll pull even more detail out of it. So I liked how this looked. Well, I came down here and I clicked on the bright sun I loved it. Look at this. Before and after. And that bright sun does an amazing job at just bringing out the colors you know, in the rocks. Now, what I didn't like is the vignette. So I'm going to come over here to the right. And here's the vignette. I'm just going to um, reset it. There we go. So now the vignette is gone. Um, and looking at it, I just noticed that the right side of it is still just a little too dark for my taste. So I'm going to come over here and just bump up the shadows just a little bit. Good. Now, remember, I could do all of this in Luminar, but I want to get it right here first. Once I have it set, let's look at it one more time. Beautiful. I'll click Apply. And now it's going to kick it over to Luminar. Now, keep in mind, up to this point, everything we've been doing is non-destructive. Meaning the original image has never been touched. So the original file that we use for this image is still in pristine condition. All we're doing is using Luminar to create a new layer. Goes into Aurora, does its thing, brings it back the original image is still safe on our computer, all right? So now that we're back in Luminar, let's come up to the Layers tools, and notice it created its own layer up on top. So here's the original, and now here is the, the version with Aurora. So I love it. Now I'm going to click on Looks, and I came over to Landscape, from landscape, I'm really liking this impressive. So I clicked on that just for inspiration, and I like it. But I'm going to go back to my history tool for a moment, and I'm going to go back one step. And the reason why I'm doing this 
is I want to add another adjustment layer. Now, by adding a new adjustment layer, now any changes I've made will be on its own layer. It'll be easier to show you the differences that I'm doing. So all the Aurora changes are on its layer. The original layer right here is the untouched version of the image. Aurora, and now we'll do the impressive. Look at that. So let me turn it on and off. Let me move out of the way. There we go. On and off. Or off or on, I mean. Good, there we are. So now that we have it set, let's look at some of the tools that it used. Um, and my buddy Dave is mentioning that LUTs is the only time that these files will have bright sun. Yeah, good. So again, and that's good to know. Let me move out of the way for a moment. Here we go. So David brought up a good point. He said that's the only time that these falls will have bright sun. So that's something where you have to decide, do I want to engage in flattery or realism? And that's entirely up to you. you know, do I want accuracy or do I want to have art? And that's, a, again, a total judgment call. So I have this here. Uh, for, the, for the matte look, before... And after, I like it. It just it, it's giving too much of a faded effect. So I'm going to dial that back, increase some of the contrast, and for the advance, I want to bring back some of the vividness. Okay. So I'm going to keep matte. For dramatic, here's before, here's after. Dramatic is actually adding what appears to be a lot of sharpness, but what it's really doing is adding more contrast between the lights and the dark areas. So I'm gonna keep that. And now the glow, before, after. Glow is not doing a whole lot for me, so I'm just gonna reset it and leave it. Now, I'm gonna come up to the top, and of course, here, it's assuming I have a sky, and notice, since there's no sky, um, uh, AI Enhancer is smart enough not to apply the effect. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to apply it, reset, now everything's back to zero, and apply it just a little bit more. There we go. Good. And under light, let's tone down these highlights in the fall just a little bit. There we have it. And... While we're at it, we might as well come down here to the advanced contrast. And let's see what we could do here. Ooh, I like that, right? There. All right, there we have it. So here's the original image. Or I'm sorry, here's the original image. And now here's our artistic interpretation of the image. Well, there you have, have it out. We could use Aurora to pull out as much as uh, the dynamic range that we can out of an image out of a single image. And then we use Luminar to enhance it even further. And once again, if we were using a bracketed set, we're going to pull out more dynamic range. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Well, I'm Benelli, and I'll see you at the next coffee break.